Honestly, when starting to make this video, I had no idea there were so many individual items in my rucksack, so sit down, get a cup of tea, I think this is going to be a long video. I'd like to thank Squarespace for sponsoring it, and if you need a website, go to squarespace.com forward slash Heaton. So as you can see, I have just emptied my rucksack onto the lawn in my back garden, and that's because in today's video I am going to go over every single piece of gear that I took with me on my 77 mile hike across the Lake District in last week's video. If you haven't seen the video, yeah, go and watch it. I'll link to it somewhere here and I'll put it in the description below. So before setting off on the hike, I did take the time to weigh my rucksack and it came in at 17 and a half kilos. That is with full food and full water on board. So that's about three liters of water and about three days worth of food and snacks. And starting off, I would say that 17 and a half kilos for me was too heavy. I, ideally, I would love to knock off three or four kilos so maybe there's some stuff that I can switch out or lose or get rid of in all of this gear here which I'm going to mention and again if you guys have any ideas of what I can replace or what I can get rid of you know I hey just comment below I am not I am no hiking expert I would love to get my base weight down and I am going to make some changes because very 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 shortly I am embarking on another hiking photography adventure right let's just crack on and we'll go through every piece of gear so I'll start off with my rucksack this is my Osprey Kestrel 68 um, so I just use a standard hiking rucksack with a camera insert inside so uh, let's look at the camera insert so this is my camera insert it comes from my low pro pro rover 45 it's just a padded bag that keeps my camera gear protected now i didn't want to take every piece of gear i own on the hike so i only took one camera one lens and one filter it was very very stripped back so people ask me the question all the time if you could only have one lens what would it be well i think i've just answered that you know by accident and that is a 24 to 70 millimeter lens. This is a Canon 5D Mark IV, 24 to 7 millimeter lens. I have my Lee holder, filter holder. And then I have a little cloth, which holds only one filter. I was, I really, really stripped it back. I didn't want to take too much gear. So I have my filter adapter ring. And people always ask me, <laughs> if you could only have one filter, what would it be? Well, I think, now, I was going to bring my polarizer, but um, I thought, uh, I like the polarizer, I really do, but I'm, I'm just going to restrict myself to one filter. So I surprised myself and actually went for the six stop ND filter, thinking that I could get some nice long exposures. Um, but it turns out I didn't end up using it. I only brought with me one tripod. This is my Benro Slim, Carbon Slim. It's, uh, I've had this for a couple of years now, um, and it's 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 amazing and it's also bad um, let me let me explain so i use this for video mainly and when you have a very small lightweight camera on it's great it's carbon fiber it weighs hardly anything for a tripod and it's fantastic and it does work it works perfect it works perfect with the 5d4 beast but only when there is no wind as soon as there's a bit of breeze then it becomes very very unstable now i think i've criticized this tripod in past videos for being unstable i think that was unfair because i've got a very very heavyweight camera on here um so i actually think the tripod's fantastic very lightweight very rigid when used with the correct camera i'm kind of improvising and i think it is a good compromise to use with this camera you know in controlled conditions it does act as a perfect lightweight tripod. Yeah. So another piece of camera gear is this Osmo Action and Crocodile Clip. This is the, uh, yeah, I talked about this in my last video and it, it's fantastic. You, if you've seen the video, you'll know all about how good this little camera is. And of course, not to mention, I am filming this video with a Canon M50, which is the same camera I used to film most of my hike in the Lake District. Nordisk Telemark 2. Oh man, where do I start? Where do I start? Right, let's let's start with the positives, okay? The positives about this tent. Look at it. Look at it. It's absolutely tiny. It weighs nothing. There you go, 950 grams. Now let me just compare that to my old tent. This is my Van Gogh Banshee. And look at the size difference. And there is a huge weight difference as well. 
massive weight difference between the two and that is exactly why I bought this but when set up they're roughly the same size. Good points, very very lightweight, very very small, very very packable, it looks pretty fancy and it's spacious, it's versatile, you can change the inner the space of the inner tent to give you a bigger porch if you want to cook or store your bag. I did not get on well with this tent and I'm sorry to say that I feel like I've wasted my money. Yeah, I bought this on, on Amazon and uh, I tried to return it after my Lake District hike but I had expired the 28 day returns policy. So I can't return this tent, I can't afford to buy a new tent. So as much as I'm about to uh, slag off this tent, I will be using it um, until I reach breaking point and I don't know when that will be, we'll see. But you know, mate, you know, I'm being a bit harsh, I'm being a bit harsh, let's start. Um, I believe this is actually supposed to be a three season tent, I believe. Um, but just condensation, condensation was unreal. And you expect condensation, condensation in any tent, that's fine. But the fact that it has the outer rain fly and then the inner fly, you know, there is very, very little gap between those two. So as soon as the outer rain fly gets wet, it's like when you get in the shower and a shower curtain just, it just, sticks and then the foot box at the bottom of the tent is quite small so the end of your sleeping bag makes contact with the end of your tent and then you end up with a very very wet sleeping bag and this happened three nights in a row in the Lake District. I took it to Iceland for a week and it didn't happen in Iceland but when we were camping in Iceland it was very very windy and we were actually flipped our sleep cycle so we were sleeping during the day so we were out in the middle of the day with a breeze and there was no condensation issues but at night time in the UK it was just absolutely sopping wet inside the tent and I even propped open the door with a hiking pole to give more ventilation I, le I slept with the outer door open and the inner door open and still woke up to condensation so these are the tent pegs that come with this tent and they're very lightweight and they look very fancy. But on the very, very, very first day of using this tent in Iceland, I was, I was being a bit rough with it, you know, I had a rock and I was banging it, um, but I didn't expect it to just snap clean off. Okay, so that's my little rant over. This is my Thermarest sleeping pad. Had this for years. Fantastic. Love it. Nothing more to say about that. Oh, love a pillow. I'm a pillow guy. I can't sleep without a good pillow. So I brought with me my Nemo Philo Light or Philo Luxury. That's it. Nemo Philo Luxury Camping Pillow. It's got its own built-in stuff sack. It's absolutely massive. It's soft to the touch. You put a little bit of air in it and uh, you've got yourself a giant, soft, fluffy pillow. But I think it was overkill for a long distance hike, so next time I don't think I would bring my big luxury pillow if I'm doing more than, you know, a few miles a day. Instead, I would just simply use my down jacket inside this dry bag. This is just a, uh, this is a stuff sack for another down jacket that I have. The actual jacket inside is not wrapped. This is just an outdoor research down jacket, really warm, really lightweight. There's some building work going on behind me, so I'll excuse any noise. And I stuffed this inside a dry bag. Any dry bag will do. I just got this one lying around. And not only will that act as a pillow when camping and sleeping, but more importantly than anything, it, uh, it will keep your down jacket dry if your bag gets wet. And this jacket's awesome, really lightweight, it's just packs down incredibly small. So yeah, down jacket. Sleeping bag, now this is a, a couple of years ago now, but I went for an OEX hydrophobic Leviathan EV, whatever that is. Basically it's a down sleeping bag. It's reasonably lightweight and it packs down reasonably small, but I just think I can do better. I think I can do better than this sleeping bag, so I will be replacing this for my next big photography hike and as well as this it was on special offer in I want to say go outdoors maybe I can't remember uh, it was on special offer and it is a nice sleeping bag but the problem is it's like it looks like I've slaughtered a goose every time I get this out feathers everywhere so I think I think as far as down sleeping bags go I don't think this is I think this is like low quality down I'm not too sure um, I believe I can get a smaller, lighter weight sleeping bag 
that will keep me just as warm, if not warmer than this. And that is something that I will be doing on my upcoming photography hike, which I'm not telling you anything about because it's a secret. So I always uh, always take hiking poles when uh, when going out with my camera and my you know any kind of long distance hiking with a heavy pack. Hiking poles are a godsend. Anyone that's not used a hiking pole on long hikes, you got to give it a go. It just it spreads the weight, it takes the weight off your back and your knees, and it just gets you into a rhythm. It's really nice. These are my Fast Packer carbon trekking poles. These are from a company called Gram Counter Gear. I think that's also a website where you just get loads of lightweight gear. Anyway, these were cheap. These were 50 quid. I've had them for a couple of years. Really, really lightweight. Super, super lightweight. But ah, snapped it. Can you believe it? On the last day, snapped it. Uh, now again, my fault. I was, you know, when you're walking and you get a bit not bored, but you know, you get a bit bored. And I was, there's big like overgrown nettles on the path and stuff like that. And I was, and I was chopping the heads off the nettles. And I chopped the head off a big nettle, followed through with the stick, hit the floor, and snapped. So um, I actually can still use it just without the bottom bit. Um, but yeah, even though I snapped it, I would highly recommend these for a good pair of cheap, lightweight hiking poles. It's just a jet boil. That's all it is a jet boil with a steel striker inside it this is great because it essentially never runs out of fuel you can use it when it's wet it's lightweight and it's, it's really good fun <laughs> you feel a little bit like bear grills when you're using it um, now this is another thing that i think i can improve on in terms of bulk and weight so i may look at getting an alternative to my jet boil but i, I love it though i really love it but if i'm doing long distance hiking can probably get a smaller lighter system and help bring my pack weight down to the ideal weight of like, well, it, it, in a perfect world 12 kilos I guess would be a nice target rather than 17.5 water filter um, water filter is incredibly important on any kind of long distance hike because the heaviest thing you're gonna carry is your water supply so um, this I've had for years and years and years it's a soya squeeze it's super lightweight, it's very effective, it filters the water very well, and again, it means you don't have to carry much water. My other way of carrying water is currently underneath my dog. Sorry, Monty. Yeah, come on. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> it's just a hydration bladder. It goes in the back of my rucksack, carries two liters of water, but again, please, comments below. The water tastes like plastic, it's disgusting, and it's not even new. I've had this for about a year now and used it many times and I can't get rid of the plastic taste. So, comment below if you've A, got any tips how to get rid of the plasticky taste of one of these, or B, if, uh, if you know of a good brand that doesn't taste of plastic, that holds about two liters, very much appreciated. Dry bag, one spare change of clothes. Just a small lightweight t-shirt, pair of shorts, pair of socks, pair of underwear. Uh, this isn't for hygiene reasons, I don't mind being smelly and dirty when hiking. This is in case you get caught in a heavy downpour, everything gets wet, you need that one, you know, that dry change of clothes for safety reasons if nothing else. Okay, an item that's not so essential is a little sit pad, a little seating pad. Um, now this I suppose would be classed as a luxury item, but it doesn't, it weighs nothing, it literally weighs grams and actually came in so handy when every time you want to sit down, have a break, have a cup of tea or a drink of water, you just put this on the ground and it gives you that lovely cushion to sit on, especially if it's damp or if you're sitting on like something quite rocky or like a gravel path or something like that. Yeah, so although it's not a necessary item, it is a luxury item that comes at very little weight, so actually I would always bring this with me you know definitely recommend this this is just a large dry sack an empty dry sack i keep this as a, an emergency just in case we get really really wet my camera gear starts to get wet i've got this big sack i can open up and stuff it all in all right hygiene hygiene um now a lot of hikers and lightweight hikers say you know don't you don't need to bring any hygiene stuff because you know embrace the stink and all that and i kind of agree with that but I do like to have a few things with me. This is just a little wash bag, and in here I have deodorant, um, insect repellent, sunscreen, toothpaste, toothbrush, and some wet wipes and some tissues. So all the bits and pieces I need. I could probably shave the weight of this by half, and that's something that I will probably look into doing. Now I mentioned sun cream. 
Uh, this is, you, you've got to have sun cream, absolutely. I do anyway, I, I burn like anything. What you don't want to do is end up with sunburn on the back of your neck and then your shoulders and face. It's just going to be miserable. So sun cream. Now this is from a company called Himea or Himaya. And this, this is fantastic. This is factor 50 that I've got. Now I know what you're thinking, sun cream is sun cream, right? Go to Boots, buy some sun cream. Oh yeah, you can do that. But this is designed uh, for surfers and basically outdoors people, you know, people who get wet, people who sweat, people who do high activity. So essentially you put this on and uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't come off. <laughs> and the great thing is this is really small and lightweight. It's also refillable. I have a larger tub or a larger bottle that you can just refill this and it's absolutely essential. And one little drop of this and it will do you through most of the day. I'd probably do two applications in a long 12 hour day. This is a power bank inside a plastic Ziploc sandwich bag. This is a RAV power 20,000 milliamp hour battery. I don't know what that means. All I know is it's big and it will charge my phone and my GoPro and my GPS watch. It charged it all three days, four days, and it's still half full. So although this is quite heavy, you know, for what it is, absolutely essential when doing multi-day hikes. I did just mention my watch. This is my Garmin, <laughs> Garmin Fenix 3 watch. I've had this for years and years and years and it's fantastic. It's a GPS watch. You can load in tracks so you can follow but I don't tend to do that much. Uh, what I do is I use it to track my activity um, and it will count every single meter that I hike and that's how I know what distances I was doing on this trek. Uh, but there's a ton of features that are really, really good about this watch. So I think you can get a Garmin Fenix 5 now, or maybe even a Fenix 6 with actual built-in maps. Um, but, you know, this, for me, I, I have no need to replace this. I've had it for years, it's working perfectly, and it does the job. And if you're ever out, you know, in the... Oh, the sun's gone in. It'll be back out. If you're ever outdoors, maybe you go off trail, maybe you get a bit lost. If you've got this bad boy on, you're tracking where you're going you can just follow it back, it's like breadcrumbs. So this watch is supposed to do about 15 hours of continuous GPS tracking before the battery dies, but I was doing 10 or 12 hour days and probably could have squeezed two days out of this. Um, so I would, I would be comfortable doing 20 to 24 hours worth of hiking on one charge, but I have a battery charger and a cable, and yeah, not a problem, charged it up at the end of every day. Little bag that I took with me in here, spare camera batteries and all the little charging cables that I need for my phone, watch and camera. Head torch, even though it's summertime and we've got like 18 hours of daylight, 20 hours of daylight, you just take a head torch, you know, you don't, you might end up hiking through the night, you might need to leave your camp in the middle of the night, anything could happen. Um, now this is actually quite big, bulky, quite an extreme one, it's a storm, I think it's a black diamond storm or something like that. This is something that I think I can reduce the weight by um, and get something smaller and lightweight and that will help me bring the total weight of my pack down next time. Compass, a little compass, oh, it's, yeah, just a compass just to make sure you know which way you're going. On my phone um, I use the View Ranger app and that's fantastic um, but you know if your phone battery dies or, or something, it, it's, I didn't have a paper map but I still had a compass, you know if I'm on the top of a mountain um, and I can see all the mist and cloud coming in and my phone dies. I can take a bearing on this, I don't know. It's just a nice little thing to have. Whilst we're on the subject of GPS and navigation, um, so I had my phone using the View Ranger app. I've got my watch tracking my path and where I'm going. I've got a little compass. I also took with me my little Garmin eTrex 30. Never used it, but this is just, I just keep this in my bag with some brand new batteries in just in case, just in case I'm out there, I lose my phone, a storm comes in, I've got no visibility, I don't know where I am. This is just always there as a lovely little guardian angel. I didn't bring a paper map with me um, on this, mainly because it's good footpaths and I always know where I am. Um, but I'm so, sort of thinking more and more that you can get away without taking a paper map, especially when you do a long distance hike. If I'm doing like a circular, I'll take a paper map, but when you're doing a long distance, I would have needed about possibly up to four or five maps to do the hike that I did, and it's just not practical, so yeah. All right, waterproof jacket. This is my Montaigne, it's a Montaigne waterproof jacket. I don't know, it's Gore-Tex. Um, but this is great for winter. It's quite thick, quite heavyweight, and 
it means it's incredibly waterproof but it's also uh, very heavy for what it is and, and I think again this is probably somewhere I can improve in the future it won't be cheap but I need I reckon I can get this down by at least two-thirds um, and get myself a really lightweight waterproof jacket yeah, but I don't think that's gonna happen on my next adventure so the type of food that I was eating, um, it was these adventure foods, dehydrated meals, high calories, very, very tasty, very, very small and easy to carry, quick to cook, just some hot water. Um, and for snacks, just things like cliff bars and you know, high sugar, high carb items. So type, that's pretty much what I was living on. To eat it, I was using my long spoon. <laughs> I will always, always take a long spoon with me. So uh, yeah, essential item when hiking and eating on the trail. All right, so I was in the shop, I was buying some food, and I saw this, it's just a little cloth. I thought, oh, that might be handy. You know, dry my hands, you know, pat my face. Um, but I ended up using this mainly to dry my tent, but it didn't work, because it's not very absorbent, it's too thin and lightweight. Um, but I, as a guy, um, another hiker channel, it's called Paul Messner, and he does amazing videos, amazing gear videos. I'm always watching his videos for tips and ideas of bits and pieces of gear that I can buy. And, and I'm always looking to his channel for advice. And they, he actually takes with him a sponge. Um, rather than this, it's a sponge to absorb all the moisture out of his tent. And it seems to work really well. This was uh, useless for that, but really good for, I don't know. <laughs> it doesn't weigh anything. Is it worth taking? Probably. Okay, we're getting to the end now, we're getting to the end. Emergency blanket. And this is a small dry bag that I keep in my pocket or in the waist belt of my bag. And basically, let me, how can I explain this? So, this camera that's filming now, that's my vlogging camera. I strap it to my camera bag like this. So when I'm walking, this is, <laughs> this is where it sits. Uh, if it starts raining, it's very, very exposed and it gets wet and then it'll break. So I carry around this bag, so if it starts raining, I just pull the bag over like so, and then I'm walking around with a big yellow bag flopping off my camera strap or my bag strap, and uh, it looks ridiculous, but it keeps it nice and dry. It means I don't have to get it, take it off, and stuff it in my bag, which is never good. So that's everything. That is all of my gear that I took on my 77 mile hike across Cumbria. Um, the only thing I was really disappointed with uh, was the tent. Some of the items I don't think were necessary and I really would love to shave three or even four kilos off the entire pack weight. And I think there are ways I can do that, take less water, do a bit more research when it comes to water sources to filter and just generally just start really, really getting down to the nitty gritty and just getting rid of anything I don't need, like my pillow, I don't need that, so on and so forth. So. That's everything that I took with me. I know this has been a long video. I hope you've enjoyed it. And um, there are links to, well, I'll put some links to some of the gear down below so you can see it. Uh, they will be affiliate links, you know, you should know that. <laughs> but you know, that's not my reason for doing it, obviously. Uh, there's also a link to my gear blog, which lists pretty much everything that I use for photography, hiking, camping, that sort of stuff. So yeah, thank you so much for watching. And again, I'd like to thank Squarespace for sponsoring this video. If you don't know who Squarespace are, and you know, maybe you wanna do a hiking blog, or maybe you wanna, you know, have a photography website, or a hiking and photography, any kind of website, Squarespace, you go on, and you can build your website. It's a drag and drop system. Anyone can do it, you don't need, you need zero web experience. I have zero web experience, and I can do it, and I don't know anything. Go to squarespace.com, forward slash Heaton and give it a free try and if you like free trial use the offer code Heaton for 10% of the first Squarespace purchase. All right there we go thank you again for watching and I will see you on another hiking, camping and photography adventure. All right bye bye.